If you're going to build something from nothing, you've got to know what really works. I took a $1,000 loan and built a $5 billion business, and now I make smart investments in new businesses on Shark Tank. This is Barbara Corcoran, and you're listening to Business Unusual. Today on Business Unusual, I'll answer your questions about business, motivation, life, or anything else on your mind. But first, if you want to get a raise, you better learn to ask. If you're good at what you do and have a boss who adores you, well, maybe you don't have to ask for a raise. But I've hired hundreds of people in my career, and I can tell you the people who get paid the most are almost always the people who ask for a raise. Here's how to do it. First, bear in mind there's never a good time to ask. It's always a gut-wrenching task. All people procrastinate, so it's smart to give yourself a deadline to get it done. Give yourself no more than three or four weeks to get ready. Ask yourself if you deserve a raise. Are you a great employee? And in my book, great employees are those who go the extra mile without ever being asked. Is that you? Next, you need to make an appointment with your boss and do it well in advance. Never walk in cold on something so important as this and ask to schedule the appointment a few weeks out. It's important to do your homework before D-Day. You'll need to make a list of all the reasons why you think you deserve a raise, which should be based on your willingness to help and all the new responsibilities you've been willing to take on since your last review. No one gives a raise for the same job you did last year. List every new task and responsibility on a sheet of paper and take it with you and be ready to back them up. It's also smart to do some research and find out what your job is worth in the open market. You need to know if your pay is commensurate with the responsibilities you have at the company and if you are paid less than your peers in the same industry, know by how much, as that's the amount you'll be asking for when you meet with your boss. When the big day comes, think of it as a sales presentation because that's exactly what it is. And really, strut your stuff. You'll need to dress for the part you're asking for, so step up your dress just a notch. When you start the meeting, be sure to not make your boss feel like she's under attack, like you're the aggressor, too eager to pounce. Make it a friendly visit, but with a specific agenda. Start out by citing the things you love about your job, the company, and how much you enjoy working for your boss. And then cut to the chase and say you'd like to get a raise and why, and know the number you're looking for, and tell your boss how much more money you want. I usually give raises from 5 to 10%, but have always given more when people come in with a higher number. If you're the lady in the house, be aware that men, in my experience, will ask for raises four times more than any woman will. Never ask for an answer on the spot, but ask your boss to give it some thought and come back to you. That's a low-pressure, courteous way to do it. Trust me, I've been a boss many years, and when someone's asking me for an immediate answer, I feel cornered like a rat trapped in a cage. If you're made to leave without any promise or indication of any future increase, don't get discouraged. Simply thank your boss and ask for another appointment to review your salary and performance three months out. But also ask her what she wants you to do differently to show you're deserving of a raise next time. This is invaluable feedback, and your goal is to leave with a homework assignment, specific performance goals to strive for so that you can come back and demonstrate that you've delivered. Last, Don't fall for the usual bullshit corporate lies or stalls, like, oh, times are tough, or it's not in the budget. Trust me, raises are always in the budget for some people, and you want to be one of those people. This is Business Unusual with Barbara Corcoran. And now it's time to answer your questions on Business Unusual. Michelle from Brooklyn, New York asks... I'm a real estate agent in New York. Was the property market exceptionally tough for you as a woman when you started? And has it changed much for women since? Michelle, I can tell you that the property market was tough then for anyone entering the field. It was basically a market that was run by men, but worked by women. But the advantage I had that is exactly the same today is I was a female. And so I stood apart from the pack when I was starting my own business. I was the only girl employing other women. 
And so use your advantage of being a female if you're in the minority and you're starting a brokerage business because everyone will notice you because it's still predominantly owned by men. Lila from Memphis, Tennessee asks, you always say right brainers make better entrepreneurs, but I'm a real left brainer. What's been your experience investing in left brainers? Lila, I've invested in left brainers and right brainers, which by that I mean people who are very logical versus people who are super creative. And I can tell you, they are all essential to building a big business. But if you're the left brainer leading the parade, forget about it. You'll need a right brainer to take more risks, to be wildly enthusiastic, to become a great sales front for your business. Just find yourself a partner. Get someone with the exact opposite skill set that you have, and you'll have a winning combination to build a huge business. And that's all the questions we have time for today. If you have a question, tweet it at Barbara Corcoran, and I may just answer it on a future episode. You've been listening to Business Unusual with me, Barbara Corcoran. Come back next week to hear more steps and missteps I took on the path to success on Business Unusual. Business Unusual is part of the iHeartRadio Podcast Network. Come back next week and be sure to follow Business Unusual on iHeartRadio or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.